it isn't charity. You know, you hear people say that like, oh, we're just giving this money away. This is this is in our own national security interest. Yes, it is the right thing to do when a partner is in harm's way. Uh, you support them. But it's not just for that. Uh, the United States uh, relative strength is is compared to our adversary. So Ukraine, for example, has caused up to 300,000 casualties of the Russian military. I mean, just think about how much that actually is. And they've depleted the uh, Russian military force by over 50 percent. So they are basically fighting one of our most significant adversary and probably our most dangerous and unpredictable one. So by doing this, our forces, our troops don't need to be on the ground and uh, fighting them should they go past Ukraine, which, of course, the next stop is a NATO country in Poland. So this is something that is completely within the U.S.'s uh, national security interest to do. And we need to do it now because essentially there's parts of the battle space right now where the Ukrainians are running out of ammunition. And that can't happen. The, they obviously, they have all the fighting uh, will in the world. We've seen that. They've proved that. But if they don't have the means, then they won't be able to fight long. Nick, Israel has really lost control of the narrative in the Middle East. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on what they can do, at least from a PR perspective, to right the ship with players such as Turkey, Brazil, the United Nations itself, the rest of the Middle East. You know, what are your thoughts on what Israel is doing today and what it could be doing differently? So I do think, you know, obvious, obviously their strategic objective of the military destruction or at least the degradation of Hamas makes sense to anybody that I think is fair minded. They can't have that uh, kind of attack and that kind of element uh, that they saw on October 7th and that we see in Hamas, which, by the way, claims to care about the Palestinian people, but they obviously do not. They hide amongst them. They try to keep aid from them. They try to actually create, in my opinion, a worse situation than it already is for their own political aims. But what can Israel do? I think the first thing they can do is to increase the <clears throat> flow of humanitarian right. aid into Gaza. We are at a starvation level, especially in the north, where there's around 300,000 people that, is, that are living in the rubble, that are uh, have, have gone to eating animal feed, grass, flour mixed with salt water. It is, it yeah, is but... a crisis level, and that is something I think they could do right now. Uh, I don't know if they'll get credit for it. Uh, they should if they do, uh, but the, but that is something that needs to happen. Mick, Mick, what's so important here, and whether we're talking to General Kimmett, General Hodges, or you, it's the idea that, okay, we have a Pentagon that we can deploy, but in the case of Ukraine, we've got to deploy it within a mix of allies with different opinions, including our own, particularly with an isolationist America. And then with Gaza, we've got to deploy it into an ally that really doesn't want us to deploy it. What do we do with Mr. Netanyahu and domestic political Israel is we're dropping parachutes and boxes on the shores of the Eastern Mediterranean. Right. And I think everybody would recognize that that is largely symbolic. It was about a truck and a half worth of material that was dropped in those airdrops. Obviously, for the people who received it, it was good, but that's not even going to come close to meeting the demand. So we have to go beyond that. I think there's obviously a tension between uh, uh, the current administration in uh, Israel and ours. Uh, and I think that's uh, and that's something that's going to make it even more difficult when it comes to how we work together to both allow Israel to defeat Hamas, but also put it on a track so this doesn't continuously happen. And I think most would say uh, that would be for a two state solution, but one in which the Israelis have a partner in a revitalized Palestinian authority, and obviously not one in which Hamas is in charge of any kind of future Palestinian state. But I do think that tension is, is we're seeing it right now. We see Benny Gantz uh, in the United States, somebody who's very well known uh, to American policymakers. He was uh, the uh, defense attache for Israel in Washington, and that is a very significant right. role. It usually leads right into <clears throat> being the chief of staff of the Israeli Defense Forces. So he is well known and he is somebody I think that uh, that both sides of the aisle feel like they can work with very closely. Right. But reportedly that really uh, enraged uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. So obviously the Israelis have right. to decide who's going to be their leader. But that is a tension that I think will exist until there's a switch at the top.